Hi guys, it's Mark from anypond.com, your trusted resource in the UK for ponds and water features. And today, welcome to Pond College. This is the August update and this one's going to be slightly different than normal because I've got Richard, the videographer, filming and we're up in the air as well. So you can have a look down on top of Pond College. What we've got here is we've got the stack slate wall garden. You've seen this before. There's been a few updates. Have a look at the lobelia. Look how fantastic those flowers look. Last week's video was about pond plants for beginners and this was one of the stars of that particular video. So check that video out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about the Pond College gardens in particular because we've had a heron attack. So the fish aren't very happy at all. So normally the fish are right down, coming up to your hand, coming up to feed. But for the last two weeks, it's been a a real sorry state of affairs. The fish have all been hiding. So talk about fish psychology. One of my friends has got a doctorate in fish psychology and they're nowhere to be seen. So what we're having is we're having a visit from the heron pretty much every morning and every night. So you might say, Mark, what have you actually done to control or what are you doing to stop the heron from eating the fish? Well, in this particular pond, We've got a lot of fish caves and we've got a lot of weed so the fish can actually get out of the way of the heron. If you didn't have the weed or if you didn't have the fish caves, you'd have to put a cover net over the top. The only real big thing with, without having a cover net is you need to stop the heron from actually seeing the fish to try and catch them. So I always say to people that are really worried about herons, think about can you catch the fish? If you can see the fish and the fish can't hide, the heron's going to have a field day. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the aeration system in just to disrupt that surface tension so you can't actually see right down to the bottom. The fish can get out of the way. So another thing that I did to prevent the heron was I moved the swan around, moved the alligator around. So I moved these floating islands to create a little bit of cover so the fish can get underneath because they want that cover from above. And what a heron actually did is it came in over the weekend and almost tipped this one out. So on Monday morning, we found this one upside down with the plant. That's why it looks like this instead of looking like this. Let's go over and talk to Kenny about the feature. He's one of the guys that built this pondless water feature that you saw in last month's video update. And he's done some massive, great big improvements on this particular feature. You all right, Kenny? Hello, guys. <laughs> so this is Kenny. He's the assistant foreman part of Team Any Pond. And he's one of the guys that has been responsible for building this pondless water feature. Actually, these plants here, if the viewers remember, or they can go on the two or three videos before, uh, they can see that these plants were planted so close together and that was a mistake because obviously they will grow up and it, it wouldn't work out. So we had to spread them a little bit. Um, then instead of uh, bark molds that usually we, we would use in this uh, scenario here, uh, Mark had an idea to use these little stone chippings. Uh, little, it's the same stone like this, but it's just small pieces. It takes a little bit of time to collect them, but it, we like the result, it's, it's nice. And yeah, it matches perfectly the, the color of the stone, the plants right here. From the top, going down, it makes a line and we had this fantasy or the imagination makes you think like it's a waterfall. So again, this was Mark's idea to put some black gravel, but make it look like it's uh, a dry riverbed. So it seems like the water going into the aqua basin down here, which it's hidden, it seems like it's going down here and it ends up on the pond, on the lockdown pond. What I wanted to do is slow people down so it actually feels like you're walking across um, and it's all about that journey. So whether we could, have, we could have put in a big stone to act like a bridge, but just by changing the colour, it makes you feel like you're walking past or walking through the water feature. And it was only yesterday when yeah. Charlotte said it. Yes, yes. She said, I don't like walking on this gravel because it feels like I'm walking on a water feature where I shouldn't <laughs> be walking. Yeah. So what, what have we got going on here, Kenny? We've got a spillway bowl, spillway basin. So you can either get this separately or you can have them together and make 
have an implementation as I've, I've made it here, like so the spillway bowl going into the spillway basin and then into the basin, which you cannot see again. And we and can uh, get creative as well with this, yes. with the Gabion stone, we can get creative and, and again, try and emulate a riverbed or do something, whether we come over here. Again, it's different textures. It makes people want to slow down. So isn't this fantastic, guys? This is Kenny's premiere. You're a bit nervous, a bit. Um, but it's all good. It's, it's really good. And I wanted to introduce you to the team in these pond updates. And Kenny will be one of the guys. Are you ready for the Builder Pond Day? Yeah. So Kenny's going to be one of the pond coaches on the Builder Pond Day. So me and George, uh, yes, we had this idea of having the three different sizes of, the, of these patio ponds. This is the terracotta color. Uh, so it starts with the bigger one, the medium, and the smallest one. So it's pretty obvious. It goes, the one fills the other, and then goes on. So for people that haven't seen this garden before, why did you create it? Well, we decided that we needed to show our DIY range off, um, and we had no one that was more DIY and novice than myself. But you're not a D even a DIYer though, No, no, but it was just important to try and show what can be done in a small space and what you can do with the kit. So um, after doing the video that we did together in the sandpit, I came and attempted to try and do the nano pondless um, and I got through halfway through it and decided that actually I don't like building and don't enjoy it. So. We had our foreman join us, George, who very kindly helped me build uh, these in this garden, really, um, to showcase what you can do in a small, small garden. Uh, it was all my ideas, my designs. I knew what I wanted. I knew where everything had to go. Um, it was just uh, George had the better eye putting it into place, really. So um, this isn't your day job, is it? No, absolutely Sitting not. Sitting in the garden, stroking the dog. Let's I can, show you, can we show you dispatch. This is where all the <coughs> orders happen. So when we receive an order, um, I pick it up on my iPad. Uh, I can see who's ordered uh, the items that they've ordered. Um, and then I will go about in picking, here, picking the items needed. Um, and if they're pallets, I will put them on a pallet. I get the pallet logged on uh, to be collected. Uh, if it's a parcel, uh, again, I just get the item, it gets a label put on it, gets wrapped up, um, packed as best as I can, and I'll get it out. How quickly can you get something out? Uh, same day. I always opt for same day if it's a parcel, as long as we've had the order around 3 p.m. Um, if it's a pallet, then I'll do it the next day, but it will always, I will always try and get it out same day at the very latest next day. We offer next day delivery on pallets uh, and 48 hour service um, on parcels, which I predominantly use parcel force and less for the bigger parcels. So it all depends what's been ordered to what service, but it usually will get dispatched same day. Depending on the service, it's about a 48 hour turnaround to get it delivered um, out to the customer. It's been a tough year. It's, it's been a very, the pandemic. We've got loads of stock though. We've, of some bits. And on some bits we're out, which is why I have, sorry, your life, um, lifestyle you've ordered is currently out of stock sign. That's my sign to say we are out of stock. Um, it's just a, you know, it's just a flag to fly. And if that's showing, then it should, it's, you know, we're out of stock a bit. So Charlotte is the real boss and it's the best thing that's ever happened to any pond as a company because Charlotte runs everything. So thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the 4th of September for the Build a Pond Day. If you're not able to make it, sign up for Pondemonium if you're thinking about setting up a pond building business. My name is Mark, the Pond Advisor, and I'm here to support you, dream, plan, and enjoy ponds and water features. And until next time, I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.